communities. And so the Ubuntu philosophy was about saying that, that we've always done this for community in Africa. You know, we actually haven't really spoken. Our, our, our base roots come from the fact that we do things for community good um, and not necessarily for this individual um, kind of good. But Linda Gell, I'll hand over to you. No, so Karen, you're right. And maybe another analogy would just help people. Things we've been doing forever is we don't smoke in a restaurant, you know. Um, why? Because we know that our, our secondary smoke can harm the people, other people who choose not to be harmed by that secondary smoke. Um, mm -hmm. And their right overwhelms our right because they have a right to, to good health. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the analogy here. Um, and and one that I think it is not necessarily, you know, in the first instance, uh, an easy one to wrap one's head around. But when you stop and realize that actually this isn't a precedent, we're Ooh. doing it on a number of fronts. Um, and and again, with the recognition, keeping a clean and a, and a keen eye on the risk and the benefit ratio here, which is very important. Do you want to say um, when it comes to mandates, I prefer that people do this voluntarily. It's always better that health is, is adopted for voluntary reasons. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes we, we you know, we, we need uh, persuasion um, uh, or we need a little nudge uh, or we need it to be uncomfortable to go, to not go the easy route, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, again, is for the good of the public. The, the second and very important reason here is that we have urgency at the moment in that we really do want to get people back to work. Um, yeah. It's so important for you. And study, and study, and right? Study. We, want, we want to be able to, we're seeing all this mental health challenge and we really want to be able to see people sure. in the classroom so that, um, and in and engaging with each other so that we don't have this this massive rise in, in mental health issues because of isolation and um, and not being able to engage with each other. So um, there's another question, um, and that is around, uh, and just before we go off that one, Jay, just remember that every single health sciences student goes, undertakes a hepatitis B vaccination, um, and it's mandatory. Um, there's actually no option. Um, so Jessica has asked, um, with, for healthcare workers with now waning immunity, when might boosters be allowed? So we're working on that right at this moment. In fact, in 10 minutes, I have a meeting with Dr. Nicholas Crisp, so the Sasanki team are working on this. We've had a donation of half a million J and J vaccines, and it's just really about making sure that operationally we can fit this in with the national program, which we don't want to derail in any way. Most important to get everybody at least with one little, as Dr. Fauci said a long time ago, a bit of immunity is better than no immunity. So it's better we get everybody at least one prime or one prime, uh, you know, two dose prime. Um, and then and then we can talk about the boosts. But we are aware that healthcare workers were early. And so they should be in the first in the queue again now. And so to answer your question, hopefully we will start before um, November, uh, or at least mid-November. Okay, fantastic. That looks like all the questions. So, um, colleagues, uh, Jessica, I see that you're about to, to write another question. You're very welcome to just pop in and, and ask that question. Um, oh, there we go. It was just a thank you. So, I think that, um, that one of the things, colleagues, just to remember that if you're looking for um, to kind of, uh, you know, I think one of the other things for all of us as, as healthcare workers and students is that we need to be able to answer these questions for the general public yeah. and be able to answer the questions around, you know, the conspiracy theories of 5G and fertility and uh, 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 the, the other strange ones escape me for the moment, but we need to be able to answer those, those queries. And just uh, in case now that I've raised fertility, I, I think that the, the studies have all shown very clearly that there's no effect on fertility whatsoever. And so we really do need to be having those and we need to be modeling. We really need to be modeling because right now the basic advertising has kind of reached as far as it will go. We need person to person convincing people that they need to be vaccinated. We need to be making sure that all our families are vaccinated, our neighbors are vaccinated, everybody that we come into contact with 
that um, that we and we make them a little bit uncomfortable. Well, I'd prefer that you vaccinated it before you come into my home. So we'll stand outside and have a chat uh, if you're not vaccinated. But if you're vaccinated, you can come into my house. Those are the kinds of conversations that we need to be well, having. And, and Karen, that's not in that is absolutely good, you know, public health. Um, you entertaining someone in your home, you are putting yourself at risk if that individual is not vaccinated. It Again, I'm an HIV doctor. It's like having sex without a condom when you don't know the status of the person you have. You can run that risk. Chances are, you know, it, it might be okay. But in a country where the force of infection of HIV is high, you really are playing Russian roulette. In the same way, you know, particularly as our waves come and go, uh, you run the risk of having somebody who may have that slightly higher viral load, who may overcome your hedge, and then you're infected again. Um, well, you want to avoid that. So, yeah. you know, it's good public health scene. Absolutely. And thanks, Linda, for the reminder, too, that we tell people not to smoke in our homes, you know, in the same way that they're not able to smoke in public places. So thank you so much for that. And perhaps just to end off on a very personal note is that... Um, uh, despite some really good public health uh, NPI measures, um, COVID hit my home with some very um, unusual symptoms. Um, and uh, because my husband and I were both vaccinated, the children were much worse off than, than we were. Um, and so we were able to carry on working and had really mild, really short-lived disease. Um, and probably may not have even been alerted to the fact that we had disease if we hadn't, they were, you know, there were such mild symptoms. So. Um, so really just to encourage you that that it was a real real life experience of, of having been vaccinated and having exceptionally mild disease, um, but others around having, and we protected our 80 year old mother-in-law who's in the same home as us and who didn't get COVID at all. So yeah, yeah. so so please uh, get vaccinated and get everybody around you vaccinated. And we're so grateful, Linda Gale, for that fantastic um, presentation. We're so grateful and uh, Tembakazi will, uh, we'll get that uh, that recording out if well, we can just change the the um, the the, the um, permissions Tembakazi so that it can be shared outside of just the attendees, and then we'll post that to everybody. Thanks. And Karen, if any of the of the team on the call need slides, I'm very happy to share slides as well if that helps for people. Wonderful. To to see my name. Thank you. Both. Okay. Thank you so much for attending, colleagues, and uh, good luck with your with your chat with uh, with Nicholas Crisp, and we hope you do as well. And thank you for all that you do for, for us, Linda Gale. We really do appreciate it. Real pleasure. It. Take care, yeah. everyone. Thanks. Take care, Bye. everybody, and stay COVID-free. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much, Karen. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you, Timber Kazi. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. okay, bye. bye.